This is your, your friend, Pastor Mike Burns from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, coming to you live on Facebook. I was so busy working on our newsletter that going out in a couple of days that I lost track of time and didn't have a normal two-minute uh, countdown. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's coming together beautifully. We're talking about today about preparing for 2022, and we're talking about the importance of forgetting. Uh, letting go of the past and uh, reaching forward to what lies ahead of us. And we're going to be sharing some very powerful, powerful principles today. I want to make sure you're going to uh, visit our website. So go to www.mjbministries.org. And there we have all kinds of free stuff, free audios, a link to our YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to upload uh, a bunch of new of videos that we have done recently and have them there in our archives. We also have the archives of our e-newsletters for the past year as well uh, as you can sign up to receive our free monthly e-newsletter which we send out on the first of every month and we put a lot of effort into this. This is something that can really impact your life in a very positive, positive way. So be sure and sign up for that. We have about 600 or so people that are signed up right now to receive the monthly e-newsletter. It's absolutely free, and we love to include you and that great uh, number of people, praise God. Anyway, uh, it's going to be a good day today. We're going to get into the Word of God and teach on the Word. Hey, don't forget also, I almost forgot to tell you, we have our free MJB Ministries mobile app. It's available in the Google Play Store as well as in the Apple App Store, MJB Ministries. As a matter of fact, uh, in this coming newsletter, we'll be giving the links that you can click on, take it right to it, or you could just search MJB Ministries in the App Store or in the Google Play Store and download our free app. It's got all kinds of great stuff there to help you in your journey of faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're very excited about it, and we hope you'll take advantage of it. You know, we, uh, I've been approached here recently by uh, somebody who oversees a internet television station, and they want to have us on with our show, uh, and they'll even create an intro and outro for us, they said, and uh, we're not really sure we're going to do it yet. It's going to cost us some money every month, and we really can't do that without partners. And so we're asking you that have been enjoying for the last five years of God's Healing Word to go uh, and become a partner of ours. You can do it on our website at uh, mjbministries.org and click on the giving tab and you can set yourself up as a monthly partner. Uh, we need to raise, we'd have to have at least $500 coming just a month just for that alone. Uh, that would help cover expenses for that as well as the time uh, on this particular station if we're going to do it. But if you have an interest in being a partner of us to help us to do that, we really need to have the consistent financial support to be on uh, this secular or this Christian uh, station that will air our broadcast five days a week, praise God. And so we're very excited about the possibilities, and we'd love to have you join with us in that endeavor, if that's what the Lord is putting in your heart to do. Amen? Anyway, there's so much good stuff. You see the links we have in our up over here, my left shoulder as well. Uh, you could visit our website, you could download our uh, mobile app, and so many good things. Let's have a word of prayer before we get into the teaching tonight. Heavenly Father, as we approach your holy written word tonight, as we prepare for the coming of 2022 in just a couple of days, we thank you so very much, Father God, for the unction of the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher alone of the church. I'm not a teacher, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And I'm asking him to think through my mind and speak through my lips to these God's people. And Father, I'm asking you to cause the ears to be listening, their minds to be open, and their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word and the Spirit of God. And we do welcome the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit into this broadcast tonight. And Father God, supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles to confirm the Word that will be taught. Lord, I thank you that as we're moving into this new year, Lord, we're learning to forget what's behind us and reach forward to the things that lie ahead of us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory for it all. 
and we covenant with you to do so for everything that will be said, done, revealed, and or manifested in this broadcast tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody that agree with that said, Amen and Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, uh, I want you, if you have your Bibles, uh, to turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 78, verse 41. This is what we were talking about uh, yesterday, and uh, where it says about the children of Israel when they left Egypt and were heading toward the promised land, which was basically the destiny that God had uh, planned for them. He said that, and basically, that they turned back and they tempted God. And they limited the Holy One of Israel. This idea that we can tempt God, this idea that we can limit the Holy One of Israel is very broad in its uh, meaning. And uh, you think that we as mere human beings have the ability to tempt God uh, and to test Him in, 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 in an evil way, not in a positive way, as well as the fact that we can actually limit him. You know, another way to say it is we could literally tie God's hands from him being able to help us the way he desires to. You know, God has literally put those things, those limitations on himself and given us the permission whether to let him be free to bless us or to tie his hands and keep him from blessing us, to limit him in our life. You know, God did not want robots when he created mankind. If he did, he wouldn't have given mankind a free will to choose. He would have pre-programmed us with making all the right choices. But that's not what God did. And the reason God didn't do that, my friend, was because God wanted people that would give him will worship. I call it will worship, meaning they worship him from their free moral will. And they did not try to say, I'm going to do this because... God makes me, has created me to do it this way. Listen, we were created for God's pleasure, no question about that. But yet we have the choice as to whether or not we will do these things. We said yesterday that we can literally become the lid on our own lives that will limit us from growing or and or excelling in our lives. And we made this statement from Dr. John C. Maxwell, a powerful, powerful statement he said that people change when they hurt enough that they have to. People will change when they learn enough that they want to. And people will change when they receive enough that they are able to. Now, praise God. As I said yesterday, I'm going to say it again today. I'm not a big fan necessarily of formulas, but I do like to, in a sense, encapsulate uh, Bible principles in a memorable statement. And here's one of those statements I wrote down in my notes and I want to share with you today. Uh, when it comes to change, uh, there's a simplified way of stating it. Listen to this. We can change our thinking through meditation in God's Word, then change our actions, which will ultimately change our life and our circumstances. Now, I like to say it to you as God speaking to you. Not that I'm God, but if he were to speak to you, this is how he would say it to you. He'd say, my son, my daughter, change your thinking through meditation in my word, the Bible. Then change your actions, which will ultimately change your life and your circumstances. Now, what am I suggesting to you? Well, I'm basically suggesting that if you change your thinking, then you can change your actions and you'll eventually change your life and literally you will change your circumstances. Now, we started this a couple of days ago talking about the power of forgetfulness. You know, not only do we need to forget the wrongs that others have done to us, and someone says, well, that's a lot easier said than done. It's really not. By the grace of God in you as a Christian, you can really forgive people. You know, Mark 11 verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anybody. I believe it's the Amplified Bible that actually says in Mark eleven twenty five that we're to leave it, we're to let it drop, and we're to let it go. I like those three statements right there. Leave it, let it drop, let it go. This involves the will of the Christian. 
And you can actually, through your own will, by the help of the Holy Spirit who is living inside of you as a Christian, you can leave behind you the things that others have done. You can uh, let it drop and you can let them go, praise God. Now, this also doesn't just have to do with the wrongs of other people. This also has to do with the fact of what this last year has uh, you know, been like in the last year, last two years for that matter. You know, I know in this last year or two, I've had several friends that have left this earth and gone to heaven. And, uh, you know, they say it happened as a result of COVID, blood clots, or whatever it might have been, the symptoms associated with this quote-unquote pandemic. You know, I'm not necessarily a huge believer in everything they're saying about it, but I do know that it is real and that people are battling and struggling with these particular issues in their bodies, and it has cost some people their lives. I know that I heard a statistic the other day saying that over 800,000 people have actually died since this pandemic, some call it the China virus, that came into the shores of America and has killed over 800,000 people here in the U.S., not counting other uh, countries of the world. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I teach on Monday through Fridays, Monday through Thursdays, especially on God's healing word. I do believe that God has already made provision for us to be well. And even though I know there are many believers that have succumbed and died in the last year, when they shouldn't have died, uh, they still did. Now, they went to heaven and they got the healing that way, so to speak, although they didn't bring their sick body with them when they went to heaven. Their spirit and their soul went there. But God wants you and I to be well. God wants you and I to be strong. Can you say amen to that? But it's important that we learn to forget the pain of the past, that we learn to forget the wrongs of others. <coughs> We've learned to forget not the people, but we need to learn to forget the suffering and the sorrow of losing our loved ones and realize that if they were Christians, we'll see them again. I mean, I remember this story that, would, that Dr. Lister Sumrall told one day when he was preaching uh, in the Philippines, he was on a several day meeting and they had great praise and worship. He got up to introduced by the pastor to speak and halfway into his message, the back door of the church came open and uh, in walked this woman dressed all in black. I mean, she had a black hat, black veil, black gloves, black flowing gown, black shoes. I mean, everything was in black and it was almost like she poured a, a cold bucket of water on the service. And uh, after the service, Dr. S uh, Lester Somo asked the pastor, who was that woman that walked in uh, to the service, been waiting my message? He said, oh, he said, Dr. Somo, that woman's husband died over 20 years ago, and she's been mourning his death ever since. Well, Dr. Somo thought to himself, well, I hope she doesn't show up again, because if she does, I got something I want to say to her. Next night of the service, praise and worship went phenomenal. The pastor got up and introduced Dr. Soma. He started to preach and teach the word. Halfway through his message, sure enough, like clockwork, that back door of the church came open. In walked that woman, all in black from head to toe. And it was like she was starting to pour a cold bucket of water on the service like she had done the night before. And Dr. Soma said, I'm not going to let it happen again. He stopped the woman in the aisle and he said, Sister, I noticed you came in last night all dressed in black and you've come again tonight into the service that way. Why are you dressed in all those black clothes from your hat to your shoes and your dress, your gloves, your veil, everything in black? Why? And she said, oh, pastor, she said, my husband died over 20 years ago and I've just been mourning his death ever since. Well, Dr. Somerville looked at this woman and he said, oh, he said, I'm so sorry to hear that your husband went to hell. She looked at him. She said, hell, how dare you say my husband went to hell? He was a Christian. He loved the Lord. He's in heaven right now. He's dancing on streets of gold. Praise God. My husband didn't go to hell. How dare you say that? And he looked at her and said, oh, he said, well, by the way you were dressing, I just assumed he went to hell. Well, she turned and walked out of the service. Next night, praise and worship went great. The, uh, <laughs> pastor got up after introduced Dr. Sumble. He began to preach and suddenly in walked this same woman. But there was a difference this time. This time she was all dressed in white. Had a white hat, had a white veil, had a white gloves, a white dress, white shoes. 
And she became, came in the church dancing down the aisle. She said, praise you, Jesus. She said, my husband is not in hell. My husband's in heaven with you. Glory be to God. And she got the message. She began to rejoice and thought, why am I acting like my husband would tell? She learned to realize that there was a day coming when she would be reunited with her husband in heaven. Let me say to you, even though we've lost our lo some loved ones in the sense that we've lost them in this natural life, they're not gone forever. They're in heaven right now, praise God, those that knew the Lord. And you and I who are Christians, we're going to see them again. There will be a great reunion day. Can I get an amen from somebody? So we have to learn to forget the past. We need to learn to forget not just the bad negative things and the wrongs of other people, but let me also say this. We need to forget the victories we've had. Now, when I say forget them, I'm not saying eliminate them from our thinking altogether. I'm saying not, don't try to ride them. I have seen ministers, pastors who've had great successes in the past, try to live off of those successes and talk about them as if they just happened yesterday when they happened 30 or 40 years ago. And let me say something to you, my friend. Not that those weren't great victories way back then, but we're to have current today victories and not just ones from the past. And so we need to learn to let those things go and reach out for the new things that God has for us. I could talk about the victories I had in the past. I've been to several countries of the world, saw great miracles, great salvations, great baptisms in the Spirit, held a great healing crusade on Long Island at 2,000 churches, uh, that uh, 2,000 believers that were trained in how to heal the sick, over 10,000 came into the NASA Coliseum. Oh, I could talk about our Jones Beach uh, federal losses that we won for the preaching of the gospel that's gone on for now almost 20 years ever since uh, we brought the lawsuit back in the 80s. I could talk about all of those victories and they're certainly praiseworthy and to give honor to God for those things. But I've had to learn to let those things go to embrace what's before me now. I've had to learn to forget the bad and the good and to look and reach forward to that which lies ahead of me. That's what uh, Philippians 3.13 says that we are to forget those things that are behind us and press toward the mark and reach for the things that lie ahead of us. Praise God. Now, I'm going to try to get this in tonight. I want you to remember something about forgetting. I want you to consider what I've said about changing your thinking through meditation in God's Word, uh, changing your actions, thus changing your life and your circumstances. That you have to remember that the things I'm talking to you today about are part of the process. Dr. John C. Maxwell said something I never forgot. It was so good and so rich when he said it. It just hit me right in my heart, and I hope it hits you in the heart as well today. He said this. He said that events are good for making decisions. You know, you go to a crusade, you go to a, a different kind of a meeting, a leadership meeting, you go to these different events. And uh, you, you can make decisions there. You can answer an altar call. You could say, I'm going to be a different man or a different woman after this event here. But he said that while events are good for making decisions, it's process that literally produces change. Now think about that. Process is not something that you and I necessarily enjoy engaging in. Uh, it's not a fast process of these things I've talked about to you today. Uh, it took time, listen, it took time for you to get into the situation or the condition that you're in today. And guess what? It's going to take some time to get out of it. See, I want you to look uh, at this like uh, it's a diet. Now, I can speak from some experience here because uh, since last April, I've lost over 80 pounds, praise God. I was 315 pounds. I'm down to well in the 230s right now, praise God. And uh, I'm going to say to you that uh, that was a process. It didn't happen in a week or a day or, or a week or even a month or two. It's taken all these months, nine months later, and I've lost all the weight that I've lost, praise God. Now, as I said, when you lose weight, you don't lose it immediately. Listen, you lose it over time, which is the correct way of affecting change when it comes to things like your weight. You know, I know that there are people that will try to lose weight fast for different events, but they say that it's an unhealthy way to lose weight fast. It's better to lose it a little at a time over time. So whether you're changing your weight, whether you're changing your careers, 
whether you're changing relationships or you're changing your thinking. Come on, somebody. You must, listen, you must be willing to put forth the effort necessary to produce lasting change. And this is what I'm talking about today as a process. So are you, this is my question to you today, are you motivated for change? See, listen to this statement. This is something that really is going to challenge you tonight. And I hope it does. Are you, uh, as long as you can tolerate the situation that you find yourself in today, let me tell you something, you will never change. As long as you can tolerate the situation that you find yourself in right now, today, then you're never going to change. But when you finally get fed up with the situation you're in, when you get, as they say, sick and tired of being sick and tired, praise God, it's at that moment that you're going to do the things that are necessary, that if you had done them in the past, your today would be a lot different than it was. See, if you're motivated for change, then you're not going to tolerate your circumstances and your situations that you find yourself in right now. You say, I want the change. Now, let me say something to you about this kind of change I'm talking about. It requires commitment. And uh, commitment is critical. Listen to me. Commitment is critical to this process. And if you will implement it, implement it with a genuine commitment, listen to me, then change will eventually occur. Now, tomorrow when we come back on the broadcast, tomorrow evening, or tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking to you about commitment. And I'm going to tell you a story from 2 Kings chapter 7 about these four leprous men that made the statement when they were cast out of the city for the leprosy and they were being attacked and the city was being attacked by a foreign army. They said, why do we sit here until we die. They made a commitment to do something that changed not only their lives, but the lives of the nation of which they were a part. And I'm going to talk to you about that tomorrow. My name is Pastor Mike Burns. I am no longer in the full-time pastor ministry. I did that for 35 years with my beautiful wife, Cynthia, in Long Island, New York. We left there in 2018, came to Florida for two and a half years, and have now relocated where uh, we went to Bible school at Rama Bible Training Center, now college, back in 1980-81. And uh, we are members, or I'm a member of RMAI, which is the Rama Ministerial Association International. But I cross boundaries in all denominations and reach out to people and offer what God has given me to them. And so uh, I would like to offer myself to you uh, who are believers and those of you that are in the ministry. Now, uh, my wife and I, we've taken some time and and we've written several books. One of them I have right here is a book that I really want to give to pastors as much as I can. And, uh, you know, pastor, it takes a little bit of maybe a swallowing of pride to say, I'll take that book. And uh, this book here is called Church Happens. And the subtitle is What Your Pastor Needs from the People They Lead. I want to send this to you as a PDF file. In order for me to do that, I need you to go to our website, churchhappensbook.com. That's the book website here, and it has all of our books there. But this book is there, churchhappensbook.com. Go there and scroll down. You'll see the tab for get your free copy today. Click on that, fill in your name and your email, and we will email you this book as a PDF file in its entirety along with bulk ordering discount information. And I know that if you order this and read it, glory to God, it'll take you less than an hour to read it, that you want to have copies to give into the hands of your members and your first-time guests. Something you may even want to as part of your ongoing messages into the new year. And I know that it will be a great resource for them. And so go ahead and visit churchhappensbook.com. Request a free copy of this book by PDF file. We'll send it to you in its entirety with book ordering discount information because when you order the actual copies of the book for your membership and first-time guests, you can get a discount depending on the number of books uh, that you will order. 
I also want to say to pastors who are watching me today, in all of our books, and not just for pastors, they're for everybody. But if you are a pastor, you might be interested to know that this book here, uh, Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, Dare to Make a Difference. This is my first book. It's a 230-page book. And I wrote a separate uh, companion study guide for this book that's part of a four-hour seminar four hours that I do in churches as doors open across the country. And I would like to come to your city, into your church, and teach this four-hour seminar. Now, it costs $30 a person. It's $25 for the two books and $5 that we collect to give to the host church to provide lunch for those who will attend uh, this seminar. Now, this doesn't, of course, cover our travel. It doesn't cover our hotel and meals and things like that, nor the honorarium or the offering that the church will provide us as the Lord leads them. And so we want to be a blessing and want them to come. And all we need for you to do is invite us. If you want to host a seminar, go to our website, mjbministries.org forward slash invite. mjbministries.org forward slash invite. And then uh, fill out the information there very short uh, piece of information. We'll be in contact with you once you submit it. And we'll talk about dates that'll work for both of us. And we'll pray about it and, and see what the Lord has in store for us. When we come for the Saturday seminar, we'd like to come and stay for Sunday morning and minister there and host a miracle and healing rally on Sunday night uh, at your church in your area. And uh, we could talk about that when you fill out that form and submit it to us, mjbministries.org forward slash invite. That's the website you want to go to, and uh, we'll be happy to partake together with you in the ministry. Now, please don't forget to go uh, and get our free uh, MJB Ministries mobile app in the Google Play Store and in the Apple App Store. It's free for you to get and download today. Also, go to our website, mjbministries.org, and sign up for our free monthly e-newsletter, which is going out on the 1st of January. You do not want to miss that opportunity uh, to get it there. We also have the archives on our website at mjbministries.org. You can get the archives of the past newsletters there, some great articles that have been written there as well. We have free audios and, of course, links to our YouTube channel that you can go and enjoy this show that we do on a Monday through Friday basis on healing and on stewardship. Praise God. We love you so much, and it's a joy to be able to come to you. Thank you for helping us. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast that we've been asked to consider coming on a, a television station that would cost us several hundred dollars a month, but we couldn't do it unless we had the proper amount of people helping us. And so if you'd like to become a partner with us, Go to mjbministries.org, click on the giving tab, and you could be either give a one-time gift or you could become our partner who gives on a monthly basis. If you'd be interested in that, go there, and we would certainly welcome your partnership here with our ministry because it's not a one-way partnership. We'd also be your partner, and you'd be on our in our prayers and we would be faithful to consistently teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Word of God and strengthen the faith of you and keep our resources from our apps, the MJB Ministry mobile app, which is free to download, or our website, and also these teachings that we do on social media. They're active every day. We do them every Monday through Friday. We love you so much. Thank you for being a part of our our ministry and our lives. I'm Michael J. Burns. On behalf of my beautiful wife, Cynthia, we just want to let you know that we love you, that God loves you. Jesus is Lord of all. You have a wonderful night, and we'll see you tomorrow night when we're talking more about preparing for 2022 on the subject of commitment, and I know you're not going to want to miss it. You have a wonderful night in Jesus.